sorry, I just jumped right into the the real nitty gritty of this, didn't I? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathleen, and welcome to the Carol Family Diaries. Um, if you haven't been to our channel before, then welcome. It's mostly vlogs, but I do a few little sit down videos like this. Um, when I have something I want to talk about. <laughs> uh, this is my postpartum tips. I've wanted to make this video for a long time. My youngest is 18 months old now, so <laughs> it has just been one of those things that I kept thinking about doing and never got around to. So I'm going to do it now while I'm thinking about it. I wanted to make this video because I just think after you've had a baby, Particularly with your first, there's nothing like the shock of having your first baby. Um, after you've had a baby, you're probably at your most vulnerable, I would say. My first couple of tips are all about um, using the bathroom postpartum. So, I mean, if you're watching this, you're probably not going to be grossed out by anything that's TMI because postpartum tips. Um, yeah, so my first tip is when you, after you've had your baby, for the first few days, eat lots of fiber, drink lots of water, um, and maybe eat a lot of vegetable soup, like nice watery vegetable soup. Um, my mum, when I had my first baby, my mum was here in Australia with us and she made a big pot of her vegetable soup and I drank bowls and bowls and bowls of it. and. But I don't know what happens when you have a when you, after you give birth, I think you just become constipated. <laughs> um, and everyone talks about the fear of that first number two um, after you've had a baby. It, particularly if you've had a tear or stitches, um, you know, the fear is real. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think it took a few days, but when I did go, I did all these things and it was <laughs> nice and soft and I didn't have any problems and it was a huge relief. Um, yeah, because you don't want to have to strain or anything like that. Sorry, I know this is TMI. Um, uh, my second tip on that is also invest in a little stool for the bathroom that you can put your feet on. Um, one of the midwives told us this um if you oh no sorry actually it was a physiotherapist told us this um if you don't know already if you have if you're when you're sitting on the loo uh if you put your feet up on a stool or a box if you don't have a stool um you know something about that height um and have so that your knees are higher than your hips that helps you go <laughs> it helps things slide out <laughs> another tip this is particularly if you've had stitches after having a baby sorry i just jumped right into the the real nitty-gritty of this didn't i <laughs> if you've had stitches um what one of the i'm not sure if it was a physio i think it might have been a midwife that told uh, that told me this if you when you're going number two if you get like a wad of toilet roll in your hand and just put your hand under with the wad of toilet roll and hold while you're going so that you can you know just put pre not, not pressure but you know just kind of hold it so that that part isn't clenching when you're going um that helps sorry another bathroom tip how many is that this must be my fourth bathroom tip it's all i should have just said postpartum bathroom tips uh, another bathroom tip is, which most of you probably would have heard this already, is when you're going, um, after you've used the bathroom, if you have like a bottle, like a squirty bottle of warm water, um, I think in America the hospitals give you one of these um, to go home with, which is great, <laughs> uh, but you can just use like a, one of the ordinary water bottles that you get from the shop. Um, fill that with warm water and just squirt that on yourself and then pat dry instead of wiping because you, you can't wipe if you've had stitches. So those are the bathroom tips. <laughs> Another postpartum tip is the boobs. Uh, I didn't end up breastfeeding for very long, like a few days with both of, both of my babies. Um, it just didn't work out for me. Um, 
but I presume that if you're breastfeeding as well, this it's the same thing. You can use this tip. Um, when your boobs become, when your milk comes in and you become, if you ever become engorged, um, it's really sore. And in my case, it was, you know, waiting for the milk to absorb back into my body and waiting for my boobs to go down. They became really big and hard and sore and uncomfortable. Um, the best thing that I did during that was put cabbage leaves in your bra. So a whole cabbage leaf in, depending on how big your boobs are, um, in just in your bra. So have a cabbage ready in the fridge. Um, it's nice, it's cold and it takes the pain away and it helps it go down. It's like, I don't know how it works, but it is a miracle. Um, I don't know if this is just an Irish thing or do other countries do this. Um, I don't know of anyone here in Australia that's done it, but it's like a wildly known thing in Ireland that you put cabbage leaves in your bra after having a baby. <laughs> and when people come over, if they say, is there anything I can do to help? Give them something to do. Like people feel more comfortable if they're given something to do. Um, people want to help, but they don't want to overstep the mark. Um, and I'm really bad for this. I, and I suppose a lot of women are, you kind of feel like you can do everything yourself. You should be able to do everything. Um, yeah, just, <laughs> just to try not to put it all on your own head because you are only one person and having a baby is really hard. You've got to, I can just hear Nolene on the monitor there, I better go up and get her. You can, um, there's only so much you can do. Um, yeah. My biggest thing was, and I didn't do this until like months into after my after my first baby was born, um, was once I conceded defeat, defeat. That's how I seen it. Like, I don't know why. Um, and once a week, and not every week even. I only did it maybe once every couple of weeks when I felt like things were really getting top of me. Was I bought a big massive bag of laundry down to. Um, their laundrette and got a service wash done so that all the clothes came back like washed dried and folded and then all I had to do was put them away that seems like a small thing but I was really like I really begrudgingly did that um you know and it was only 20 I think it was 20 or 25 dollars and it was a huge big bag so it was like two or three washes um and for the sake of that, like it really did take a lot of pressure off me and I should have done it every week. So if there's something like that that you can afford to do to kind of, or if it's getting your mom to come over or your sister, I didn't have, I don't ha didn't have my family here. If you can get someone to come over and do a couple of washes for you or like, just don't be afraid to ask for help. Everyone is, everyone understands, particularly people who have had babies, um, or if it's if it's a sister or friend who hasn't had a baby, I'm sure they'll see <laughs> what you're going through and sympathize and thank God if there's anything I can do to help. And everyone says that if there's anything I can do to help, but for some reason we don't ask. There's nothing like a newborn to throw your world into chaos, especially if it's your first, uh, you just like, you're like, oh, what's going on? The best thing that I could do, like don't let yourself care go out the window because that's what we do as mums we go last um but there's basic things that you need to keep on top of i remember there's so many days it would be like three or four o'clock in the day and i hadn't even brushed my teeth you know you're in survival mode um so get yourself little little rhythms and routines and try and stick to them as much as you can a great thing i found to do was have my shower at night time after the baby had gone to bed or once my husband was home. Have my shower, make sure that I'm all nice and clean. Um, if I need to wash my hair, it's done. Um, do you know? And also spend maybe 20 minutes, even if it's just 20 minutes, you know, clean the kitchen. The kitchen is the number one thing, I think. If the kitchen is clean and ready for the next morning, if you're waking up to all the dishes done, everything, all the bottles ready if you're bottle feeding, um, and a few little things ready for you to start your day off. It, it takes the pressure off you. It doesn't take that long in the evening and it makes you feel much better. Now I know once that baby's gone to bed, sometimes you're just like, I have just got, I've just got to lay down. I've just got to, <laughs> I need sleep. Um, 
but I've always found if you can just set yourself up for the next morning like I'm not saying have everything have the house sparkling have everything done but just the bare necessities that'll help you get through so for me it was like have some burp cloths ready have the bottles what I did with the bottles was I uh, washed sterilized them boiled the water filled them up to the point where they need to and then left them on the counter and then you can get these little tubs um, for the formula so I also used to bring a bottle into the bedroom for at night time so I didn't have to be faffing about um, in the middle of the night for the night feed. Um, you can get these little tubs where you put scoops into the little holes and you twist it around. So you just open the flap and then put it in, shake the bottle, done. Um, so you don't have to be opening the big tin and then measuring out with the scoops. Um, and for my first baby, I only had one of those little tubs. And then for my second baby, I got like three of them so that I had a line of bottles ready and a line of these little tubs um, so that it would get me through the day and that night. And then the next morning I would do all the next, the whatever top of bottles I needed. Um, and it seems like things like that seem like getting the bottle, making sure you've got enough bottles to get you through like a couple of hours in the morning. And that seems like common sense, but it's not. <laughs> have a newborn you're just you can't think like you your brain is scrambled uh my my last tip and i think this is it's not really a tip um it's just just letting you know <laughs> something that i wish i had known like everyone tells you all about the baby blues to be prepared um uh, whatever um what i wish i had been told having my first baby was the first month is the hardest there is nothing like having the shock there's nothing like the shock of having your first baby that you know you're looking forward to this baby for so long and you love them so much when they come but that transitioning from giving birth and going home with this little person that is completely dependent on you the hardest thing is getting used to being you're switched on all the time you're there's no like I don't know if you'll even understand this if you're not a parent because I didn't but there's no you're in mommy mode all the time you are constantly on you're constantly available to this little baby there's no like when you're going to bed at night you don't know if the baby's going to sleep all throughout the night or not like some people some babies don't sleep <laughs> for like years <laughs> but you don't know if you're going to get an hour of sleep uninterrupted if you're going to get five hours sleep un uninterrupted so even going to bed you might on the off chance get a full night's sleep but you don't know that going to bed so you're constantly on like constantly on I don't know if that makes sense um but it's really hard I find it really hard to transition to that um and I wish someone had told me that the first month is the hardest and after that every week gets a little bit easier a little bit more normal um I think it takes 28 days to form a habit so you're forming a habit with this new little person in your life um you're getting to know them they're getting to know you and you're transitioning them into a routine of your daily life. They're fitting into your life that you've lived for however many years, you know. Um, and they are completely dependent on you for everything. So the first 28 days. After that, and I felt, I remember after the first month feeling such relief. I was like, oh, it's actually getting easier. Because I had thought, I remember at week three, I was just like, oh my God, this is so hard. And thinking that this was it, this is the way it was going to be until I had a toddler or something. Um, and after week four, I remember thinking this huge relief and this weight lifted off my shoulder, like, oh, so I'm actually getting the hang of this now. Not that you ever fully get the hang of it, but it does get easier. The first month's definitely the hardest. Um, and then, you know, it comes in waves, you know, you, there'll be times when they're going through a sleep regression or they're teething, cutting a tooth. Um, but there's nothing quite like that first month, I don't think. I hope this helped anyone who is expecting their first bob. Um, 
congratulations if you're awaiting the arrival of your first little munchkin. Um, you'll do great. Um, it's the most amazing thing that has ever happened to us is having a baby. Um, and then shortly after we had another one. Um, so we, we kind of had a full on couple of years there. Um, we've now got a two and a half year old and a one and a half year old. Um, and they're just, they're everything to us. They're, they make every day amazing. Um, yeah, so you can <laughs> check out our channel if you want to go and see our little bubbles. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.